Modern Warfare Zombies is coming to an end, and we now have 10 classified schematics that have shaped the experience. Today I'll be ranking them from worst to best. Some of these are clear standouts and others barely got touched. Quick reminder, these rankings are based on my personal opinions and experiences, so if you disagree or have a different ranking, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Starting off at number 10, we have the Golden Mask filter, which was introduced in the Season 3 update on May 1st. To be honest, I've never used this schematic until now in the gameplay you are watching. When I heard about the Golden Mask filter, my first impression was kind of excitement, but then very underwhelming when I found out what it actually does, and here's why. My expectations was that it would fully protect your mask in the Aether, Nest, or the Storms. I thought this thing would have been amazing for the red worm fight or maybe even just slow down the tick damage but nope all it does is passively replenish your mask once you're out of the aether nests or storms it's only real utility comes if you're dealing with the storm caller or constantly running aether nests or strongholds but outside of that pretty much useless very underwhelming Next up is the Bloodburner Key. The Bloodburner has been around since the launch of the game, and it's definitely one of the coolest concepts. It's basically Modern Warfare Zombies' first ever wonder weapon vehicle. Like, think about it. You could find the Bloodburner randomly throughout Urzikstan, but only one player could grab it, which made it a bit of a show off and a flex. The Bloodburner can drive on water, which is pretty sweet, and running over zombies charges up an EMP pulse blast. But. Despite how awesome it looks, it's buggy. You get stuck in walls, it just glitches you everywhere. Teleporting, it's not fun. Kind of ruins the experience. Plus, let's be honest with ourselves, the Scorcher is just a much better way of transportation and more reliable. Coming in at number eight is the Dog Bone. Now, Spots eight through six are pretty much interchangeable depending on your preference. So I'm gonna lump them together, but I rank them out based on their overall usefulness. In my opinion, the dog bone lets you summon a hellhound companion, but the kicker is you can get one of these hellhound companions on Urzikstan without even using the schematic. You just need to collect chunks of flesh and find a dog house. That said, the schematic version does have more health, so there's that. And also the schematic version will revive you if you get down. But why waste the dog bone for an item slot in your bag when there's other options? At number seven, we have the Sergeant's Beret. Now, this one does a bit more than the dog bone. Sure, it disguises you as a mercenary, but that's kind of super niche. The real benefit is that the mercenary who follows you around can use healing aura, while the hellhound can also revive you. I don't feel like it's as reliable. Just my, just my opinions there. It's the same thing as the dog bone, honestly. Coming in at number six is the Disciple Bottle. Introduced in the Season 5 Reloaded Update, this thing is a tank. It deals heavy damage, and while it won't revive you like the Hellhound or the Mercenary, it more than makes up for it in raw power. If you're not worried about going down and you're looking for a real companion, the Disciple Bottle is where it's at. Now we're getting into the top five. And at number five, we have the Deadbolt Detonators. This schematic is amazing, but it can kind of force you to play a certain way. Personally, I like to run decoys or cashmere's in my tactical spot, which don't work with the Deadbolt Detonators. You probably need like gas or stun grenades. But if you're a Molotov user, or better yet, rocking the Wonderloft, you're in for a treat. You can also combine it with the RGL-80 and the slug ammunition along with its aftermarket part and you basically got a pseudo wonder weapon set up. It's a fantastic support tool and takes a little planning in my opinion to use effectively but well worth it and definitely deserves to be up there on the list. Number four goes to the grenade bondolier. It's simple, straightforward, and it works. The Bondolier passively restocks your grenades and tacticals. If you're prepping for a dark aether run and need a stockpile of cashmeres, this will save you a ton of essence. Instead of grinding out contracts just to buy a few, you can slowly stock them up over time. Drop one, stow it, and it'll begin to refill. Repeat the process. The essence you can save goes towards other important things like self revives, juggernauts, or turrets. It's just, it's too good.
Number three, number three. Coming in at number three, we have Mags of Holding. If you ever played Cold War Zombies and you remember a particular field upgrade called Ring of Fire, it's kind of like that, minus the damage boost. With Mags of Holding, it takes ammo from your reserve pool so that you never have to reload. Sure, speed cola can help at times, but not having to reload at all, that's a blessing. And one thing that MAGA holding does compared to any other schematic, in my opinion, is it can take weapon and make it better. Sure, there's a lot of good weapons in Modern Warfare Zombies, but some of them, the reload kills it. For example, the TYR or the WSP Swarm with Kimbo. Just having MAGA holding and the ability to not have to reload just makes it all that much better. That's why it's number three. And then there were two. Now I had a tough time deciding between the top two, but coming in at number two, we have the Aether Blade. This lethal throwable locks onto the closest three zombies, takes them out, one shot, and then it returns to you kind of like a boomerang. And then there's a minor cooldown. It's perfect for when you're cornered or being chased by super sprinters or hellhounds, just turn around, throw it at them, and boom, they're gone. You got breathing room again. The only downside is that it doesn't take out elites very quickly, which, I mean, let's be honest, that's really not that big a deal. And no lethal in the game actually does that. So I don't even know why I mentioned it. The utility and the fun factor are what earned it the number two spot for me. Definitely something I prefer to have whenever I go into a match every time. And at number one, I'm sure everyone could have guessed this, is the golden armor plate. When deciding my top pick, I asked myself a simple question. If I could only keep one schematic for Modern Warfare Zombies, what would it be? After really thinking about it, there was only one, one answer, and it was easy. The Golden Armor Plate. The Golden Armor Plate removes the need to constantly plate up, which saves time and can be a game changer, especially in the higher tiers or in the Dark Aether. Plating almost becomes a non-issue. Yes, at times you will still need to plate up. But in the times you don't, you can focus on the action instead of scrambling around looking for armor. You know, you know how it is. When, some, when you need it, it's never there. When you don't need it, they're everywhere. And that alone makes it the most valuable schematic in the game to me. Well, there you have it, friends. That's my ranking for the 10 schematics in Modern Warfare Zombies. If you agree or disagree, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And always, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, hit the notification bell, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll see y'all on the next one. Laters.